Summary of How to Win Any Argument Without Raising Your Voice, Losing Your Cool, or Coming to Blows By Robert Meyer Start with yourself. Plan to win arguments by clearly defining what the arguments are about and what you need to do to win them. While you want a solid base of logic, most arguments are won by emotion. Most of the reasons people do things are not rational. Your goal is to access the factors that motivate people and to use them as leverage points to win arguments. Conflict is part of any relationship, but being in conflict does not mean you have to get hurt or lose your emotional balance. Most people do though, so you'll have a big advantage if you can stay calm. Maintaining a calm inner self protects you from being influenced by emotions, from coloring the world to match your expectations and from treating false information as if it were real. Staying calm will let you walk away from arguments you don't need to win or abandon positions you are clinging to out of pride or habit. From that place of calm, seek the underlying reasons for any argument. Look for the hidden messages behind the words. Stay cool and give your full attention to building connections and listening for cues and clues. The consent zone. A consent zone is a conceptual space that you construct by setting the right tone and using the right language. You win arguments by guiding all the interactions within your consent zone. Persuade the other parties through connections that appeal to them emotionally, and find ways that they can identify with you. Put others at ease to make them receptive to your argument. If you are enthusiastic, people will share your enthusiasm. Position yourself as someone others can agree with and trust. One way to do this is by agreeing with them or even praising them. Avoid any actions that disrupt the consent zone. Don't focus on the past or the negative. Don't judge others, don't attack them. Avoid suggesting that they are being unreasonable and try not to force them into positions where they look bad. To get someone to agree with your message, you cannot separate it from you as a person. Emphasize a personal connection with those you are trying to persuade and cultivate all aspects of yourself to be more persuasive. Dress appropriately, of course, but that's just a start. Tie your argument to your concern for the other parties and their interests. Link your points to things that they already value. Listen to others, that alone will build trust. Let them set the pace of the conversation, follow their tempo as if you were dancing. Don't make grand claims for yourself. It is more credible to demonstrate your worth and let others praise you instead. Position your claims and your whole argument to make them more appealing. People evaluate proposals by comparing them to other proposals, so make your request seem minor by asking for something larger first, then backing away. To convince someone to do something expensive, give them something more expensive to compare it to, so your offer seems reasonable. To build credibility, be as precise as possible. Identify some person or group your target audience values, and get someone related to that person or group to endorse your concept. Find someone appealing to your audience who used to think as they do, but who became richer, thinner or in some other way better off by listening to your argument. Produce expert testimony to support your position. Remain kind, polite and respectful, these attitudes stay with people long after your specific argument has faded. Logic, emotion and reaching agreement. To make your argument more appealing to your listeners, first, define what you're talking about. Don't assume that everyone fully understands the argument, or that previous terms or labels are the best approach. Second, redefine any useful element of the larger issue. Third, change the scope of the issue. Show how your proposal relates to larger, smaller, or different issues than your listener understands. Fourth, explain what will happen if your proposal isn't accepted, or if alternative proposals are. Clarify the drawbacks of not following your approach, and use simple if or then statements that your listeners can follow. Finally, make agreeing with your proposal seem easy. Craft the logic of your argument to be as solid as possible. Make your points completely clear, so anyone who hears you remembers exactly what you intend them to recall. Start with the business card test. Write the central points of your argument on a business card. If you can't sum up your core points in that space, your argument isn't focused. Once you can write it in that smaller space, draw your own conclusions from those notes. Support your argument with three essential points. 
If you have more than three points, reorganize them until you have exactly three. Shape your argument into sequences and lead your listeners through them. Craft your argument so that it is attractive. Know the limits of your supporting material. An illustrative story will make things vivid, but it isn't proof that what you say is true. Likewise, making general claims or appealing to what everybody knows isn't especially convincing. Be specific and support your contentions with facts, although facts alone are not enough. Appeal to your listeners' values. Use the right questions, timing and words to transform your initial bare logic and facts into an idea that is tangible to your listeners. Convert the facts into analogies that make them compelling. Add intensifying adjectives. If you use numbers in your argument, change them from large, abstract figures into specific images that your listeners will remember. Cut the abstractions, use short, common words to bring your argument to life. Find labels for your key terms that tie into larger values shared by your listeners, and that slip past their critical filters by appealing to emotion rather than logic. Presenting an engaging argument. Ask questions when presenting your argument. People can react to statements as passive spectators. Statements can even make people feel attacked, but questions get them involved. Ask questions that take the edge off disagreements and allow the other parties to see themselves in complementary ways and to voice your position for you. Tie your questions to your listeners' image of themselves. Get them to see that agreeing with you puts them in the best light. To confirm your understanding and build the habit of agreement, ask questions that paraphrase their words. Pose hypothetical questions and, whenever possible, ask what questions rather than why questions. Using what is an invitation to people to produce information, using why often puts people on the defensive. Call upon tendency action plays or taps, which are existing prior emotional tendencies that prompt people to act. For example, one such tendency is that people will move faster in pursuit of something if they think it is a limited time offer. Can you narrow the window for your argument and spur them to action? A related tendency is for people to want what seems rare, so make your proposal seem exclusive if you can. People tend to want to give back to someone who has given to them, so see if you can reach agreement by giving people things. Opponents will agree more readily if doing so seems to bring them closer to becoming the people they want to be. Can you hitch your appeals to their dreams? Can you link your appeal to current trends or fashions? Since people want recognition, try to show your listeners that they'll receive more of the attention they want by agreeing with you. Always lead people through your argument with a specific goal. Finish this sentence, at the end of my argument, the thing I want to happen is, be sure your call to action is clear to your listeners, which means, of course, that it must be absolutely clear to you. Make sure your goal is realistic, don't ask people to agree to things that aren't possible. Avoid saying ever or never. Don't threaten unless you're willing to carry out your threat. If you do need to threaten someone, make your delivery as soft as possible. Don't use force or tie your position to unlikely events. What if you can't get the other party to agree? You can still win in the sense of resolving the situation and retaining amiable relationships. If two people are deadlocked, consider having a third party decide. If two people are gridlocked on dividing assets, as in a divorce, let one divide the assets in half, and let the other choose which half to keep. If the assets can't be divided, such as pets or rare art, let each person alternate in choosing an object to keep. If you're negotiating a financial deal, have each side write down the amount they perceive as fair. Then, average the two numbers. Arguments in specific contexts. While you can apply the same general principles in most arguments, some situations require special care and attention, including family arguments, when you argue with a friend or relative, the relationship is more important than the specific argument. First, consider that relationship and remind yourself of it. Since you have an emotional connection, make sure the other person can feel your position. Use I feel statements e say things such as, I feel your actions aren't in your best interest, rather than your actions are wrong. That gives the person a chance to acknowledge your feelings. It also lets you work together to reach small agreements, you both know how you feel and move to larger ones. 
focus on actions, what the person does, not identities, who the person is. If you can't agree, lay down clear rules, and always motivate with praise. Written arguments are the challenge is to make yourself clear in print, and to get your inequalities to come across as they would in person. Complicated sentences and big words get in the way. Use clear language and simple words. Make your written argument as short as possible. Ask yourself what your point is and what's in the argument for the reader. Don't tell readers things they already know, use their time well. Each sentence should say something fresh. Link sentences with transitions to lead readers through the argument. Read your writing aloud to check the flow. Write for the ear by repeating words and sounds, quoting known sayings, from literature or ads, anything will do, and using parallel or opposed constructions, such as, we used to, but now we. Create sharp images, tell stories to connect emotionally. Telephone arguments, an argument on the phone is very circumscribed. Your call may intrude into a busy schedule, and you may have to evade voicemail and secretarial barriers. You cannot receive or convey body language cues. Unfortunately, it is easier to say, no, over the phone, because you're not face-to-face. -face. Plan your call, including what you'll say to the receptionist. If you must speak to someone directly, call at the end of the day to maximize your chance of getting through. Visualize your listener. Use your hands and body as you speak, some of that energy will come through in your voice. Consciously change your tone and rhythm to keep your voice engaging. When silence falls, use it, counter yourself before answering. Arguments before an audience is start with enthusiasm. Catch their attention, never bore them. Get them involved. Distribute handouts well before your talk, or after, to avoid distraction. Pace your delivery to maximize comprehension. Count on yourself and your speech, not visual aids. If you are among a series of speakers, try to go first. Plan your presentation, including questions. Plan humor-based transitions. If you lose the crowd's interest, jolt them back with a joke, a question, or an unrelated statement. Arguments at meetings, be sure of the basics, know when and where the meeting is, what the physical setting will be and who will be there. Plan for each factor. Speak early and often to maximize your influence. Expect and plan for resistance to your proposals. Acknowledge other people's good points and praise their ideas to build shared positions, recognize tough questions. Carrying even part of the audience at a tough meeting is a success. Know your objectives and show your listening by asking focused questions. If you're running the meeting, start with the basics, is the meeting necessary? Who needs to be there? Build your consent zone throughout. Ask for votes to confirm agreements and verbally underscore any progress you make.